heard about chartered flights, planes for the rich. They charter a flight and then they use it. But first time I'm hearing chartered buses in Bangalore city by the Bangalore Metropolitan B, B and the Bangalore Metropolitan Transport Corporation for the schools. And they charge them heavily. <laughs> for a kilometer, they are charging 55 rupees. <laughs> And we also applied for one of the route uh, because we tried uh, trying to get, convince the B, BBMP to uh, BMTC to send buses to the routes uh, where our second group of British children are coming. But they said that is not possible. So when we said chartered buses will book, oh, it is very expensive. Our buses along with the bus drivers, everything will come to us to 45,000 rupees that we calculated. But the BMTC is costing us 65,000 rupees for the month. Nevertheless, we, we said we'll book it, but they demanded 60 days advance payment comes to 198,000. We paid today. <laughs> I said, go pay. The second road was very important so that I can get my village, getting the buses run in the villages and then convince the BMTC to run buses for the village also because uh, that is around 100 students on that particular route. We paid that money and then I told Nagra sir that we put up an application with the Commissioner of Bangalore Metropolitan Transport Corporation and the Transport Minister and pull strings. That was it. <laughs> Paul Adrian Maurice Dirac, born on 8th August 1902 in the Bristol in United Kingdom, died on 20th October 1984 in Florida and United Kingdom. Was an English theoretical physicist who is regarded as one of the most significant physicists of the 20th century. He was the location professor of mathematics at the University of Cambridge, a professor of physics at Florida State University and the University of Miami and a 1933 Nobel Prize recipient. Yes. Paul Dirac said, if you are receptive and humble, Mathematics will lead you by the hand. Yes, that was what the Indian Pranayama taught the whole world mathematics through Pranayama, through breathing techniques, through the physical healthness. Yes, because Pranayama ta taught the people if you can control your breath, you control the world. If you can control your breath, you control your disease. If you control your breath, then mathematics is thy name. You will calculate, control and calculate every steps. And once you know to calculate, there is take a not to drop, to be wasted. The Japanese Zen master said, after he took the body, he heard his disciple has thrown the balance water on the floor. He turned back and said, you should have given that water to the plants. And he walked ahead and said, take the sui, means not a drop, not a drop to be waste. That was the calculation, not a drop to be waste. If you understand that what not a drop to be wasted, then you are the richest. It becomes like a printer sheet in a cup of vanilla ice cream. Out of all that you did, if you are not calculating, means you are not conscious, you are not observant. That pinta shit will fall and the whole damn thing is gone. One step, that one drop, one step leads to 10,000 steps, 2,000 miles. Goes the saying. Even in the HF cow, they said one drop, if you leave it in the utter of the HF cow, a cow will fall sick and you will lose the profit. That you drop with the one calculation is very, very important. In Pranayama, they teach us here. Take the yoga mudra, lift the elbow so that the pressure from the chest doesn't fall onto your lungs. You could breathe and that was there everywhere. But when you are having, when you are very tired, you keep both the hands on head. You breathe, not keeping the hands down. You feel more tired, you get giddiness. So people who are getting giddiness and you feel more tired, you rush up to the wall. Lift both the legs on the wall and keep the hand on the head and lie down flat. You can breathe. 
it's very easy. That is mathematics. They say lift your elbows up, lock your close your right nostril, inhale from the left one, close it uh, retention for four times and exhale two times. Inhale two, retention eight, exhale four. That means in the pranayama they are taught to you if you take one, you work four times. Otherwise, you don't take, you don't touch. Even in the breathing, they said if you take one, you have to hold on to four times. Means in the holding on, you have your control and your calculation four times. And then after you work for four times, you give off two to the poor. And once you take that one, four and two, the next step is you have to make sure like Kaisan, every day one improvement. Today if you have done one, tomorrow you will take two and you work for eight times and give a four. On the third day, you take three into four times and then give off half of that. That was the Indian calculation. And it has been put into practical terms only in one country in the whole world. One country in the whole world. Tell me the name of that country. Japan. Paul Durek said, if you are receptive and humble, receptive. Yes, that's what the whole topic of from the last 840, 50, 50, today 850 days. I was non-stop to be receptive when you go to listen to your teacher in the class. If you open your ears and your eyes and your heart and allow the music of the teacher to enter into your body, you don't have to do any homework at all. You don't even have to go and study by heart. When you see the question answer flows of its own, such was beauty. If you are receptive and humble, well, humble means you are flexible. Hence, in every stage, they taught you that you have to be flexible in the sense you have to do your warming up exercise and your stretching exercise before you start even your singing class, even before you start your dance class, your karate, your yoga, your music, uh, whatever you call it. Even when you go to the school also to open a book to study, you have to stretch. Because when your body stretches, it becomes you become humble. When the body stretches, it becomes so flexible. Flexibility is called the humble. If you are receptive and humble, mathematics will lead you by the hand. The richness leads you by the hand. If you know to calculate that one drop not to waste. And Japanese children are taught. All the primary children from the primary school, they are taught to work for 20 hours. Can you believe? Can you believe that will happen in India? Girls and boys work in wherever they wanted, they can go and work for 20 hours. Primary school children. And by the time they finish high school, every child has got minimum 3 million Japanese gen in the bank without touching. Japanese post offices. It's the most richest post office in the world. Although richer than any bank in Japan or in the world. A trillion dollar empire. No children will touch that money. Can you believe that is the calculation? Hence that country has become rich. They learned that India's pranayama. Inhale one, work for four times. Give of two. Yes. <coughs> and for the ch girl child. Or a boy child to go to the after the high school, they want to go to university. They have to go and ask the father. And my Onochang was an ex was an example. Onochang finished her high school and she wanted to go to the university. So mommy said, We have to talk to the father. And after she spoke to the father, she said, Father has agreed to sponsor your university for three years and what is the house home science what Ono Chan has taken is home science she studied in the Tokyo Christian 
university, one of the top ranking university in Japan for girls. And father said, yes, I'm going to spend this much money for you for the university. And her duty is to say, yes, dad, and I'll make sure that I'll get 100 out of 100 and work very hard and I'll pass through the examination. Yes. See, in India, can you believe a child are telling the father or begging the father for money? It is just giving freely. Hence the poverty. Hence where have, what happened to the pranayama calculation? There they have been asked. And once you promise your work, the other two children couldn't go to the university because university is very, very expensive. Paul Edwin Morris Drax said, if you are receptive and humble, receptive and humble, yes, receptive, yes. Receptive means to be conscious of what the seniors, your father, mother is talking, what the guru is talking. Even if you know Japanese children have been to, even if you know, you still listen again and again and again. The Jews have to keep coming. Mathematics lead you by the hand. Mathematics means money, multiplications. Can you believe a primary child, a primary school child has got 3 million Japanese yen in the bank and you see what amount? That is a kind of shame. I'm not telling you should shave and not litter, but the Japan after the Second World War destroyed, but they became one of the richest economic might in the world. They can become through this tekusui, through this pranayama, through what Paul Edwin Morris directs. If you're receptive and humble, be receptive and humble. Mathematics will lead you by the hand. You will lead you to richness and you are the richest in the world.